enjoy the awesome pitches. Who's been here before? Nice. I'm loving the energy. Who's new? Always. Good. 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 <laughs> Sweet. So the format is two companies every Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock. They're going to pitch for six minutes. And then we have 20 minutes of audience feedback. Um, and the goal is to help these entrepreneurs share their, um, their experiences and everything um, that they've built so far, as well as get some help from the community. So we want to provide you know, positive feedback and ask good questions that challenge what they're doing and make sure they're you know, making the right decisions or thought things out, as well as figure out ways to help them kind of accelerate in the community and make connections whenever we can. Um, so today we have, and we'll see if the help will change the right slide. We have Ryan with True Hair, and we have um, Ron, who's actually an organizer for One Million Cups in Orlando, right? Um, that's visiting, and he's, um, what's the name of it again? World Housing Solutions. World Housing Solutions. So those are our companies today. I just want to recognize some of the organizers of One Million Cups here. Um, my name is Ruben Pressman. Um, we have Daniel Wethoff. Uh, we have Sean Kennedy. Richard Wood is not here today, but he's probably out in Kansas City where One Million Cups started. And then we have, um, who am I missing? Oh, John Morrow as well, who couldn't make it this morning. So um, I'm already tired of hearing me, so I'll let Ryan come up and uh, tell us about your hair. Woo! Good morning. to have that thinning hair, you say one day, you know, what's happening to my hair, it used to be so 
thick and, and luscious and you don't know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> so our women, our women are trading up to better products. They are looking to take care of their hair so it lasts longer. And men should be doing the same thing, but it'll probably take a little bit longer for uh, them to adapt. Our HSN customer is 90 years <coughs> over 40 years old and has an income of over $50,000. So why are our products different? Well, we put great ingredients in it. A lot of our products contain, most of our products contain uh, a true hair complex, which is exclusive to us. It's made up of natural ingredients that include hops, rosemary, golden seal, witch hazel, and chamomile. So these are gonna add smoothness, shine, and keep your hair looking fresh longer. So what do we offer? We have an array of products, and like I said, we focus on volumizing. So we have extreme volume collection, which includes a shampoo, a conditioner, a hairspray. TZ's combs were really innovative. They are not like your traditional teasing comb that you buy at CVS or Walgreens. They're actually coated in a PVC rubber, which means that the hair is actually attracted to the comb. So a traditional plastic comb is actually gonna wrap your hair, it's gonna break, it's gonna damage it. So in the long term, we're actually doing damage while trying to achieve that style. We've covered ours in a rubber, so your hair is attracted to it. It's not going to break, it's not going to damage, but it's going to give you the volume that you want. We also have razor roots thickening fibers, so it's a styling cream. Gentlemen, I use razor roots every day in the morning. I get my hair a little wet, I put it in, I blow it out, and it stays with me. It gives my hair that thick look. Right now, you might think, well, he has thick hair. I really don't. I have a lot of fine hair. In order to achieve this, you need a product that's actually going to make it thick and full. So ladies love this product because they put it in the morning, they blow it out, and it lasts with them all day. It gives them that thickness and volume. And then they don't have to wash their hair every day. So I'm going to skip ahead a little bit because I'm getting a one-minute signal here. Um, myself, Chelsea, and uh, my other colleague, Preston, have been working on the brand for the last two years. We've done a gross revenue of close to $2 million. And in that time, we've sold about 55,000 of this color in the brush. So this brush is still with a micronized powder that actually thickens and colors the roots of your hair. So women, if you dye your hair, you have gray roots or dark roots, we're gonna give you a solution to cover that up. So if you're getting ready in the morning and you see those gray roots, if you know you have a big meeting or you're meeting your girlfriends for dinner or your husband for lunch, you can cover those roots instantly and no one will even know they're there. That actually saves you time because you don't have to go to the salon and get it done or do it yourself at home. And it's going to save you money because it's going to extend that time in between the salon visits. I have a lot more that I can tell you about the brand. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, we, our main business is on HSN. We're on QVC Italy. We're in some retail stores. And we have a website. So, I actually made a code just for you to get $5 off. So if you want to visit our site and purchase any of the products, you can get $5 off. And then I'm going to raise you one. And if you tweet or Facebook, I will respond and give you an extra $5 off. So that's $10 off your order on our website. And thank you very much for your time this morning. Nothing works as well as a product demonstration. Share it with you. <laughs>
projects and a little bit better. One that like talks is about community, and it's different for every presenter, but it's about how much you can grow the startup community over one million cups of coffee, and it's started in Kansas City. So every presentation is different. Some are really at concept stage, so they're helping people vet through their concepts. Some are, they're looking for investors. Some are, they're looking for programmers because they have their investments, they're ready to scale. So a lot of it is just really what can the community do for the presenter, and also just Talking about, you know, if you're looking for investors, you need to target it more. If you're looking for this, you need to target it more. And giving suggestions, you know, have you contacted this person in the community? And, you know, it's really to be supportive and helpful at the same time as letting them know maybe where their goals are. Thank you, Alfred. Um, just so everyone knows, my goal was really to tell more people about what is happening right here in the community. I don't know if half the people, even most of the people in the room even knew this is happening right in their own backyard. So my goal of being here today is to kind of let people know this is happening. And uh, any ideas, insight, feedback on the products, I'd be happy to help. Definitely connect with us because we want to support things locally and we'd be happy to help you out as well. So thank you. Great. Are you showing that HSN is a good concentration of your marketing time? Because it sounded a little bit of the kind of niched in that regard, and then you're, you're now starting to explore out into other forms of exposure. So, is that, are your metrics showing that HSM is sitting on, I think, twice a month? Uh, every, every other month, basically. Every other month. Yeah. So, is that, is that showing that that's enough exposure uh, for your product line? When I say product line, I mean even the amount of the number of units and the kind of product that you're producing. Can you keep up with that, or is it behind, or is it ahead? So, it varies. Um, it has its up and its downs. Uh, we started on HSN because we had a relationship with HSN. We grew our business, and it's been very successful for us. We have products that are very demonstrable on TV. So we cut out a lot of the process of educating the customer, uh, getting the marketing dollars, spending a lot of money on PR up front. We put the product on TV, we explain it, and we make the sale. So it's very, very beneficial because we're able to move product very quickly. But now that we've established ourselves on that medium, we know there's a different market out there. There's a whole other market out there. So we obviously reached out to PR to have coverage in different magazines, which allows us to go into retail stores. Uh, I didn't actually get to it, but we're online, in catalog, and in retail stores for soft surroundings, which is um, definitely speaks to our customer and knows how to sell their hair products. But if anyone's asking, HSN is a great way to get their product out there. I have uh, two questions. One is, what's the scope of your products? And the second question is, when you're on HSN, um, your, as you pitch, there'll be certain times that you say something that the numbers go up. What are those things that you say when the numbers go up? Um, our number one selling product is the color and lift brush. So this is a brand new item. but. It's a reincarnation of another item. So we had this brush in a different component, and it was just for coloring. We knew that our customer lacks thickening in our hair, so we added that to the brush. And this, this is now a thickening and color brush. So what we see is that when we go on air, you have to explain the benefits of using this product. So it's going to cover your roots, it's going to add thickness, it's going to add volume, fullness. But what really gets the phones to light up is when you show how it works. So when you're able to demonstrate the gray roots on air and immediately make them go away, people really respond to that as a visual cue and it actually shows the product working. And then in addition to that, we focus mainly on volumizing products, but we have some other products that you can use every day as well for anti-humidity, anti-frizz, which I just uh, let Sharon use in her hair, which is a miracle serum. So how did, how did you Wonderful. like that? Wonderful. Feels great. It's even <laughs> Andrew's hair. Yeah. <laughs>
reiterate and reiterate and reiterate and make a product that you really are proud of. Uh, we made products locally here for a while and then it just didn't work out. The consistency wasn't there with our manufacturer and the expertise wasn't there. So we moved to a couple different manufacturers and most of our creams or liquids or lotions are all made here in the United States. Um, our combs, our plastics, and our powders are made in China. Thanks for your question. What about the science? Is there would appear to be science behind this? Uh, I leave that up to the chemists. I don't like. And really how do you, you know, acquire the chemists? Are they your staff? Are they no. Contract? Uh, they they come with the manufacturing facility. So I find a manufacturer that has a chemist on staff. I work out an agreement with them where they have an upside so that I don't have to invest up front on developing a formulation. But it is very important to follow trends to keep up with what people are talking about. A lot of people ask us, do you have parabens or sulfates in your products? And some of our products do have that. But the trend is that they're not supposed to have that. But people don't really care why. They just know that everyone tells them that they're not supposed to have it. And a lot of that takes away from the effectiveness of the product or what we're used to traditionally. So a shampoo suds because you put sulfates in it. The sulfates is what activate it and make it suds. So when you eliminate that ingredient, it no longer does that. So people say, well, the product without sulfates doesn't work. So I have to use it with the sulfates. And they have this battle internally. And then you're saying, well, how do you educate the customer that the sulfates are actually not bad for you, they're just what makes it suds? But whenever else tell them the sulfates are bad for you. So it, it is a challenge. You have to be on trend and know what goes into your product in order to, to educate and tell your customer why it's good or bad for them. How did you get started financially? Did you bootstrap or did you get into large investors? Or how did well, you get traction? Two years ago, when I got involved with the brand, it was part of a larger organization. So we had the luxury of letting them fund us for a while and make some mistakes and, and get some growing pains out. And as of late last year, we bought the brand back from the larger company and now we are financing friends and family our own investment. Trademarks, patents? Yeah, we have trademarks on um, the names of some of the products and the branding. We have uh, no patents currently. I noticed on your ingredients list, hops is one of the things that's in there. Mm -hmm. um, big push for gluten free foods, but also gluten free skincare, hair care, hops, of course, is gluten free. How do you overcome that? Um, there is a certain part of the population that we are very uh, in tune with that is actually allergic to glutens, so we are working to make adjustments to some of our formulations. Uh, when we created the complex, it was uh, it's all together, so I don't necessarily put each individual item in there. I create a complex that I can add to my product, so currently it's, it's still in the formulation, and yes, it's gluten-free, but they're really, it's, the way that it's in the ingredients is not going to Irritate, you know, it's not like a skincare product. We have a different classification of ingredients and how they work on your body because they're on your hair, not on your skin. So it's a little different, but we're working, you know, to adapt to what customers want. Have you considered celebrity endorsements <coughs> like Iron Maiden? <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, we had a lot of experience. I used to work with Kevin Harrington TV, guys, Matthew on TV. Um, celebrity endorsements aren't always the best. They're very costly and they don't always uh, directly correlate to sales. So although it would be great to have a celebrity tout our product, it's not necessarily the best thing for us right now. I thought Bernie Borges would ask this, but uh, your product lends itself very much to social media marketing. How much of an effort have you made there and how successful have you been? Um, we have good and bad results on social media. To be honest, our customer is much older, so a lot of them aren't as active on the daily on social media, but we do have a good, we're active, we're out there, and we're continuing to grow our efforts, and we want to be there to be a customer service aspect to our customers. So when they're looking to ask questions, and they want to know more about their brand, they can come talk to us there.
Any other questions? Just can we have a partner in this? No. Can I ask, is there a, a way for you to get involved with like in a beta or something like that? I know they have their own products, but uh, some sort of national uh, school or place to get here. So there I are. The yeah. yeah. <laughs> there are uh, two directions companies usually take uh, salon professional or consumer retail. And we've definitely chosen the consumer retail channel. There's a lot of conflict in between to kind of breach those. So people that are salon usually stick salon or they create a home brand for retail or vice versa. And um, we're really just gonna focus on the consumer retail. So part of the reason being here, if anyone knows anyone that has beauty retail stores, I'd be very interested to talk to them or any connections to Ulta or other things like that. We have some connections, but anyone that can kind of direct us in the right direction. I want to go back to the thing you said about social media. Is do you fall in the 35 plus demographic that you were talking about? I hate to shop. I don't watch HSN. My shopping is on the iPad, the phone, even for kids I do it that way. So the best way I come across new things to try is usually in the social media, emails, things like that. And when I said older, I didn't mean in disrespect. <laughs> <laughs>
Have you done any targeted advertising on Facebook for that demographic? <coughs> you said you want to bring the younger demographic to your, your product. Yes, we have. We've done, we have. And okay. The, and I'm sure a lot of people are trying to make this possible, but just to get them on the Facebook page and into the site to buy is a lot of money. So it's, you know, it's a balance of where you spend those dollars and how you spend them. <coughs> What percentage of your total revenue is being driven by e-commerce versus TV channel? So it's uh, I mean, it's TV, ninety percent or more. So e-commerce is a small part. Yeah. yeah. So Ryan, what can we do to help you grow your business here? Uh, like I said, if anyone has any connection.